So right now we're going to look at gel electrophoresis, which is a technique that's used a lot in biotechnology. Um, it's a great technique for separating things out based on their size. So it's used to separate fragments of DNA out based on their size, or you can use it to separate out proteins. In this demonstration, we're going to use it to separate out these dye molecules by their size. It's also useful because you can compare the results of gel electrophoresis and you can start to try to determine the identity or the exact size of some of the molecules that you've run on your gel. So this is our gel. It's kind of like gelatin. Um, you can kind of see this translucent, um, clear material. It's a lot like jello. Um, and we made this um, with a little comb inside. So you can kind of see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little holes that the comb left in the gel. Those are called wells. Um, and we're going to fill those little wells with these substances. So there's one, two, three, four, five dyes of known identity. And then there's one, two, three dyes of unknown identity. We're going to load each of them up into a separate well. And then we're going to run the gel um, with electricity. That electricity is going to pull the molecules through the gel. And we're going to try to determine the identity of the molecules that are in these unknown dyes by comparing them to the pattern that we see for the known dyes. So um, I'm going to use a micro pipetter. It's already set to 20 microliters. And I'm going to use this to pipette 20 microliters of each of these substances into the gel. So starting with this bromphenol blue, um, I'm going to get that in there and then I'm going to throw away this tip so that I don't contaminate my next well with those with that dye. In the next well, I'm going to grab a new tip and in the next well, I'm going to put this methyl orange dye once again. 20 microliters. It's really, it's kind of difficult to make sure you get it in the well. I spilled a little bit on that one. Hopefully it doesn't screw things up. This is our PG dye. And grab 20 microliters. Try to get it all in the well this time mostly. Then I'm going to load up our XC, our xylene cyanol. I'm going to get a new tip. And then I have this um, pyronin Y or PY. I'm going to grab the fresh tip. Put this in the fifth well over. And now we're going to start loading up the unknowns. Each time I'm going to grab a fresh tip. This is our unknown one going next to the PY. Once again, 20 microliters into the well. Then we're going to load up our unknown two. Discard that tip. And then finally our third unknown die is going to go in this last well over to the right. Okay, 
So the, the gel has been loaded with the dyes. And now I'm going to put it in the electrophoresis chamber. So normally when you do gel electrophoresis with DNA, you put all of the wells on one side of the gel. Um, because DNA is a negatively charged molecule, it's always going to move towards the positive electrode. It's attracted to the positive electrode. With these dyes, there are some positively charged molecules and there's some negatively charged molecules in the dyes. So we put the comb in the middle this time so that we could separate out both positively charged molecules, those should move towards the negative electrode, and negatively charged molecules, those should move towards the positive electrode. So now I'm going to pour running buffer into the chamber and this is a solution that's going to, that we're going to run the electrical charge through. I'm going to fill up so that the gel is just barely covered with the running buffer. And then I'm going to put the top of the chamber on. So I'm going to put the black electrode on the black lead, red on red. And then I'm going to turn on, so this is our power source. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to turn it up. Okay, so I turned the voltage up to 100. Um, and then I pressed run. And now you can see these bubbles um, at the positive and the negative side. So we know um, that the current is running through the running buffer. Um, and we're going to let this run for 30 minutes. And hopefully at the end of 30 minutes, we'll be able to see how far along these dyes have been pulled through this gel. You can kind of think of the gel as like a molecular sieve, so it's going to give some resistance, but the smaller molecules are going to be able to float through more quickly, so they should travel farther in the same amount of time. The larger molecules are going to have more drag, um, and it's going to be it's going to take longer for them to move through the pores in this porous gelatin. So they should stay closer to the wells. Um, we'll check in on this probably about halfway through and then we'll examine it after it's been running for 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes, so we're gonna let this run for 30 total, so we're about halfway through. Um, so we're still applying the 100 volts of electricity through the buffer and through the gel. Um, and as you can see, we have some movement of the dyes. So um, this BB dye is getting pulled towards the positive electrode, um, as is the methylene orange and the PG um, and the xylene, the, Z, the XC. Um, our last dye, the PY, is actually getting pulled in the other direction towards the negative electrode, indicating that it's likely positively charged. So our task, the last three wells, remember, are our unknowns. So our task after this is all done is going to be to look at what we see for the known dyes and try to figure out which combinations of known dyes were present in the unknown mixture. So we're starting to see um, that these unknowns included multiple dye molecules, so a couple of these other ones that we also ran. So we're going to have to try to figure out what these mixtures are in these unknowns after it's all done. So this has been running for about 30 minutes now. So I'm going to now turn it off and I'm going to take off the top and then we're going to take our gel out and we're going to examine it. 
they kind of slip out once they're wet. So we'll slide it into this enamel pan so we can examine what happened over time. So um, just to remind you, and I know that you have a little diagram of this on your lab already, um, but this well was the well that had um, our bromphenol blue. So that was in this first well. We can see this single purple spot. The second well was the one that had our methyl orange. Um, so we can see that single spot of orange dye. Our third well had our PG in it. So we can see that's this kind of um, coral colored spot. Our fourth well had the xylene cyanol, so we can see this beautiful blue color that didn't travel very far. That must be a fairly large molecule. And then our last known dye was this PY. And so this was the one that was moving in the opposite direction towards the negative electrode. So this one must be positively charged. And so now your job is to look at this signature, look at what happened to these known molecules in the first one, two, three, four, five lanes, and then use that information to determine what combination of these known dyes was in unknown number one, unknown number two, and then in the last row, or in the last well, unknown number three.